Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Sip and All, where God puts the awe and awesome. I am your host, Brandon Lee Windsor. If this is your very first time tuning in, thank you so much for deciding to spend some time with me and our very special guest, my brother, Charlie Lee, uh, Wayne Windsor. <laughs> I almost said my middle name. Do we got to do the Sip and All thing again? Ab- absolutely. Oh, okay. What, th- what do you think this is? But this is a very special episode, Charles. This is episode 10. Wow. Whoa. Okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, for the 10th time, let's do this. Well, you, you missed one on an episode. Just saying. What? With Ryan. He didn't do it. Okay, that wasn't like a... Thank you, Lord, for this day, for this amazing... <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for this day that he has made for you and me. One, two, three. Tap the leg. Boom. Sippy. Okay, so my brother gives me... Um, a hard time because my bonus episode with my cousin Ryan Romero, 2.5, um, that was just a spur of the moment. I wasn't really thinking. It's not necessarily like a real true sip and all episode. That was just like we wanted to react to the Beatles song on right. air and it turned into a, ep- a podcast episode. Um, so there's that. Okay. okay. So, Jeez, so do you literally have 11 episodes and... We did it 10 times, or is this your 10th episode? This is my 10th episode. This okay. is episode 10, official. So, okay, so that episode that doesn't count is I mean, counting it, in your count. It doesn't, it does count, it doesn't count, <laughs> because, I don't want Ryan to th- hear this and think, <laughs> like, his episode doesn't count. Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's posted up, it's not like... <laughs> yeah, it's because it's on YouTube. I, I'm saying it like it's not really, like, a legit episode, because I couldn't upload it to Spotify... Yeah. And Apple Podcasts. So oh. that kind of is why it's just like a bonus episode. It's just kind of like on the side, you know? Right. Um, you just called Ryan your side piece. He, uh, well, <laughs> Ryan, you're the best. <laughs> the um, best side piece. I'm you're the best for. side piece. Okay. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know what a side piece e- is, keep it that way. Do not Google it. Praise God. That's, 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 that's a good part to sip. Yep. Okay, Charlie. I have a very deep question for you. What is it? And this is where it could just unravel. Okay. Okay. Into this deep emotional hole. Sick. How do you not let your past affect your relationship with Christ? Or does it? Yeah, not. So. When you asked that, I thought of whenever uh, Pastor Jason from c is that his name? That homie with the beard? Pastor Nate? No. Pastor Sh- uh, Jason Shouten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. He talked about whenever, like, um, releasing chains. And he left a trail of chains that are, like, your past, your burdens, your yeah. temptations, whatever the case is. Things that you drop, things that you let go. Yeah. And he said... You're you're able to look back at them to reflect, but you can never go back to that place to put them back on. Mm-hmm. And I think that's been a battle that I deal with, well, dealt with. In what way? Because because it's like I don't I don't ever want to put more come off and seem like the perfect christian that i switched my life around and now i'm perfect i'm not perfect i'm never gonna be perfect the whole reason i went to god is because i'm not perfect and sometimes i'll get in these head spaces where i feel like like back then i feel like i would have to like take a dab or go like drink or something just to kind of prove to myself that I'm not a perfect Christian Mm -hmm. and just to kind of keep myself humble. It's stupid, but it's what I did. And so I've learned that I can, well, one people's perception of me doesn't affect me and my walk. Mm -hmm. If I say something and you think I'm coming off as a perfect Christian now, um evidently it is on you 
if I do like come off like snarky or like arrogant, then that's something I got to work on. I'm, you know, I'm good with correction. Um, and I could always come back and apologize. But if I'm saying something genuine, like even like there was one time, uh, we were making a joke in the gym and I called myself a, a, a saved hoe cause I'm no longer for the streets, like just being funny. And, and one of the girls was like, Oh, well you're not better than anybody. I was like, I never said I was mm-hmm. like, I never said I did. I was like, this is a joke. Mm-hmm. You know, but like I am acknowledging that I am a changed man, that I don't move how I used to move. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think your your past almost should affect your walk. I think not in the sense of you always coming back to it. Right. But in the sense of you should always remember where you came from. Exactly. Yes. There is a sweet balance between not letting your past affect you, but never forgetting what God has brought you out of. Yeah. Um, and that's why I can talk about my past um, without, like, I know, being affected because I've been set free from all those things. Because mm-hmm. I've had conversations conversations with some family members. Yeah. And they're like, I can't believe you went through that. And I'm like, dude, I'm fine. Yeah, like, like we're cool now. <laughs> yeah, like, if you talked to me when I was 17, I'd probably, like, start awesome. freaking out. But it's like, now I'm cool with it. Um, and in a weird way, I'm kind of happy that those things happened to me yeah. because they grew me and they made me the, they made me to the person that I am today. And too, like what, what I tell people is like, because of those things and because of that past, whether, whatever, like yours is, you're able to walk into rooms that other people wouldn't even get to look at Yeah, because like you could relate to people because of your past Mm -hmm. so let's say like like you can walk in a room full of like drug addicts or kids who had to deal with drug family members that are drug addicts whereas some other kid that grew up in the church didn't see it didn't deal with it they're not going to know how to relate right they're not going to know how to like talk to these people because they don't know what what's what might be going through their heads right whereas me and you we can walk in and almost feel at home Mm -hmm. now obviously we're not of the world Mm -hmm. but we can relate to these people, tell them how, how we overcame it and right. either save them, right? Not say, well, yeah, save them, but like, yeah. you know, change their lives through God or at the very least plant a seed. For sure. You know? That's really good. Um, and that's why the body is so important because it's like, um, we've been through certain experiences that we can minister to a certain group of people. Um, but there's also people who've dealt with things where it's like, I don't, I can't really speak to that because I, I don't. Yeah, we don't know. And that's why being led by the Holy Spirit is important because the Holy Spirit can download things. Um, and at the same time, too, you don't have to say anything when you minister to people. Um, just the listening mm-hmm. ministers to people. Yeah, just really. Just being there. Um, uh, one of my favorite quotes, I use this a lot, especially when I preach or when I talk about like ministering to people. Uh, it says minister the gospel and then when appropriate use words. Mm -hmm. And so basically what that means is your countenance should preach Jesus. Your presence should preach Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, And so just listening to people is so important and could even more be more beneficial than just, well, let me just tell you what the Bible says. And it's like, people might not want to hear what the Bible says right now. Yeah. Cause I don't know about you. Sometimes I get fleshy. It's like, this is what the Bible says. Like, I don't want to listen to that right now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. But I th- I think, like, when you're able to kind of see it like that and, like, do it like that because, like, you've sat and you've prayed and, you like, you sat in silence and you, like, looked for his voice. You figured out you, you actually know who God is for you. Mm-hmm. And you've built that and you've grown into him. I feel like there's a lot of people who go to church on Sunday service, but don't worry about serving God. And because of that, they tell anybody and everybody that they're a sinner, that they're, they're going to go to hell and burn in hell. And they're not because they don't know their calling and they don't know how to move into certain rooms. Mm -hmm. Cause there's some places I won't even, I won't say nothing, especially like, especially if I don't hear the Holy spirit. Cool. We don't got to talk. Mm-hmm. You know, there's certain conversations I have with people where, like, I'll, like, like, uh, there's a, there's actually, uh, no, yeah, th- there's certain conversations where, um, 
I won't even like bring God up mm-hmm. really. Like I can talk about my life. Yeah, for sure. Be like, this is what I'm doing, but I won't like minister, right. you know? And I think, yeah. and that's why I say uh, in part one that you need to know who God is for yourself. Right. So when he talks, you can hear him. Yeah. Because we have a lot of people just shooting in the dark mm-hmm. and hoping something hits. Me, yeah. Totally. Um, and you don't have to answer this question, um, but is there any part of your past that still affects you or that the Lord hasn't necessarily set you 100% free from? Yeah. Or something that you're dealing well, with? We need to be careful because the Lord set us free and everything. We're just walking it out. Right. As my pastors have said. But is there something that I'm still stumbling on? Uh, Yes. It is actually my addiction well it's not my addiction anymore but the addiction to lust and all that um yeah the and the reason for that is because it's a generational curse for us i mean not only is our family prone to lust but with addictions Mm -hmm. and so i've grown a lot out of it i've broken a lot of chains i've been set free from I would a lot like honestly I I am set free. I've been set free from it. It's now just continuously and consistently walking it out. Yeah. Um because like I said like with those chains you can break those chains but you can always go back. Mm-hmm. You can always put those chains back on and that, so that's like that's what I'm on now is like consistently like keeping away from that part of my life. Yeah. Um, and I mean, too, like there's sometimes where I sound a little too cocky and I get a little too prideful as a joke, but you know, we do need to watch what we say. Mm-hmm. So well, there's life and death in the power of the tongue. You feel me? So yeah, it's like, totally. So like, it's, that one's not super serious to me as of now, but it is something like I acknowledge, like mm-hmm. just cause one, I do it to be funny. Um, but at the same time, the life, uh, life and death is in the power of the tongue. So yeah. it's like, you know, sure. how, how close am I getting to that line? Yeah. I think something for me is like my thinking. Yeah. Um, thinking that I'm inconsistent, not consistent. Um, thinking that I'm not like, I don't know. Like good enough? Good enough. I compare myself a lot. I've actually gotten better at comparing myself to people. That's good. Um, but I just feel like I'm like the only word I can think of is like a loser, and I know I'm not. But like, yeah. there's just sometimes, sometimes where, um, like I've been doing something for months, and then someone else does it, but it's like really amazing, yeah. and I'm like, dang, I suck. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I've dealt with that too. But for me, it's like. So it can be that, like you know, with going to the gym, I'll see, I see, I'll see some homie with like yeah. a great physique, and I'm just kind of standing there. But sometimes too, it's even like there could be, or back then, like there could be a homie with like a a really good talent that I don't even do, like a singer, and I'll get mad because I can't sing. Mm-hmm. Like we went to open mic night, uh, me and uh, the girl I was dating at the time. And this man comes up and he got pipes. He just sings, bro. Like he, oh, it was, it was beautiful singing, but I was sitting there in the back mad (laughs) because I couldn't do it like that. (laughs) But like, but I had to check myself. I was like, I, you don't sing Mm -hmm. at all. You, you, I maybe done one singing lesson and I was just kind of not to be funny, but it was just like a spur of the moment. Like I had a quick desire to sing. And my homie is a uh, a, a singing teacher, so he was like, "Yeah, I'll you know I'll show you the ropes a little bit." And I went one time, yeah, and that was it. Right. And I'm yeah. sitting there mad for no reason. Mm-hmm. So, but I will say like, check out that book with Kylie Oaks because oh. it, it helped a lot with yeah. thoughts. I uh, I love this because it's like your gifts don't define you. Mm-hmm. Just because you're a good singer doesn't mean. Hold up. <laughs> Just because you're a good singer, you cannot find your identity in that. Yeah. Because if you do, 
the only time you have like the high is when you sing is when you sing when you're on stage but when yeah. the lights go out that's it on the stage the lights go out in your heart and mm-hmm. it's like man like what am i doing um so i've gotten better at comparing myself um like a whole ton i used to compare myself a lot like really bad but now it's not that bad yeah i was i mean i always say like don't don't compare somebody's chapter seven to your chapter one mm. you know like in a sense because that's just because they're there and you're and yeah. you're here doesn't mean that you're never gonna get there yeah if anything you'll get there it's just gonna be different because it's accustomed to you yeah it's kind of cool that you say that because not that i would compare myself to other podcasters mm-hmm. but i was watching this joe rogan documentary about when he started and he said the very first night he podcasted he had 200 listeners and I had a thought, like, man, like his first episode had 200 listeners. But you got to think, Joe Rogan, Rogan was already yeah, famous yeah, by that he, point. He, so, of course, he's going to have a big crowd. Like, I'm starting from the bottom. Yeah. And so the fact that I have like 31 subscribers right now, I'm like freaking out because this is awesome. It's still good. And so it's like, some of you might think 31 people is not a lot of people. Dog, 31 people, that's you a lot of people. started from zero. Okay. And I started with zero subscribes. So. Okay. So, yeah, I really like that. The comparison is a uh, it's a robber, mm-hmm. and so you need to kind of learn how to get time. rid of that stuff yeah. out of your life, man. Yeah, but it is crazy to think about, like, there's kids our age, like, driving Bugattis and, like, Porsches and, Son. like, making, Son? yeah, with, like, all this money. Man. It's crazy, like, in just, like, opportunity. Like, I don't, like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and, like, become jealous or and envious of it but like it, it it's crazy to think about some kid my age is rocking around in a mclaren mm-hmm. just because he took some opportunity that was given to him yeah and too it also could be dad's money you know what i'm saying well yeah you know daddy bought him a car but i'm kind of blessed like i love the fact that we i'm not saying this because we were poor but it's like our childhood was pretty normal like yeah we didn't have tablets like every uh, like every kid has. Me and my brother actually had to go outside and do stuff. I hated that. You hated that? <laughs> well, because it was well, at the time I didn't like you. You didn't like. Wait, hold up. Let's let's just yeah. dial it back. You didn't like me, dog. We fought all the time as so, kids. So brothers fight. That doesn't mean you don't. That means that you don't need to not. But well, I just didn't want to like play with you as a child. Okay. Outside. Well, when did that stop? When did you actually start liking me? I don't know. I think like thirteen. You're like, I don't like you. <laughs> I still don't. <laughs> You're like, I'm still like working you. on it. I've <laughs> been praying to God about it. <laughs> That's the whole reason why I came to Christ was to see if I could fix that. And it hasn't worked. No. Lord's still working on me. Yep. Yeah. Wait, what would you say? I didn't hear it. When uh, you, 13. 13? I, 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 I think so. Do you remember the moment and the time and what were we were doing? You're like, you know what? My brother's actually really sweet. No, I, I think it was just like an average day. Like we were kind of just chilling. I was like, you know what? what? He's, not, he's not that bad. I'm, I'm shocked. You're shocked? We, yes. We literally fist fought. So? I mean, at the end of the day, you're my brother. I never hated well, you. Well, it's all love. Like, I'm never, like, like... Can if, you hate someone and love them at the same time? Yeah, I guess you can. Maybe. You can dislike somebody That's a deep them. thought. That's a deep question. Okay, go ahead, sir. But, um... No, like, like, if we fought, okay, like, I'm not, you know, it is what it is. But, like, I still wouldn't let anybody else touch you, even when back as kids. So you didn't hate me. Yeah, I never said I hated you. Did I say I hated you? Yeah. Oh, my bad. I, I think I just so. didn't like you. You didn't like me. Yeah, I didn't say that. kind of hurts my feelings. That's okay. We're oh, past it. Gosh. Yeah, it's a change. I'm offended. Me. I'm just kidding. I li- oh. I'm trying to think. I mean, I think you were kind of mean sometimes when we were kids. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's kind of cool that we're close now. Yeah. Are we close? I think we're close. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We're, yeah. We're um, better than where we were. Exactly. 100%. We're way better than where we were. But yeah, we did have to play outside. Well, two, the problem with that was like... The problem with us? No, or no, no, no. The problem outside. with going outside was that like we like... Like it was back... Well, well, well in Albuquerque, it was fine because we knew all the neighborhood kids. Right. So it was a cakewalk. But here, when we came to Jersey, we didn't know nobody right. at first. And Which, so we had to like, and the and the problem with that too was that all the neighborhood kids already like went to camps mm-hmm. and stuff. So we were kind of just like there. Yeah. And so like for like, I think what, three to four days out of the week, well, like after we met everybody and we made friends with the kids three to four days out of the week, we still couldn't like hang right. out with them because they were at camp. Right. And because we didn't really live here. So like building a relationship was kind of difficult. Um, for those of you who don't know, 
Uh, my dad lives in New Jersey with his fam, and my mom is in Albuquerque with her man. And fam. That kind of rhymed almost. That was interesting. Um, but in closing, this might be a really deep question to close on. Um, how do you enjoy – sorry. Do you, I had to figure out how I was going to ask this. Do you, like, did coming to dad's house – um, like once a year affect you or was it like, are you like totally fine with it? Were you just like, why in the world are we like, how come our parents aren't together? Yeah. <sighs> did it affect me? Probably. Um, actually I did hold on to like a lot of anger with the divorce. Mm-hmm. Um, Honestly, it wasn't even like with dad because obviously, you know, with if if you know our if, if you know our dad, like, you know, he's living a f- pretty good life. Mm-hmm. He's made he's he's doing great. No, yeah, he's doing he, like, he, he's, he's living pretty good. Inside. So like, I never really felt any type of way towards him. Um, but but like with the anger, like I did like or with the, I did blame myself for the divorce. Mm hmm. Um, and then I also blamed myself for mom's life as a kid. Okay, why? Because I, knowing our mom, she's a firecracker of a person. And I feel like if she had that freedom without me, she might have taken over the world. Now, obviously, she would have to make that choice, and that's on her. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like, I just feel like, or I felt like sometimes that it's my fault that she couldn't take that opportunity because mm-hmm. she would she talked about like being being a lawyer and a ballet dancer and all this fun stuff and she had to stop because i i, I came into the picture mm-hmm. and so yeah so Do you think that you were actually a blessing in disguise to protect mom from doing that kind of thing eh i think <laughs> Yeah, no. Well, no, cause like I, I, I don't know what I would be protecting her from. Okay. Um, okay. That's I a think question. Na- I'm just curious. No, I think now, like I, I think the reason why like we didn't live with dad, um, was because was to save mom, mm-hmm. for sure. Like later in life, but I don't think my birth had anything to do with protecting her. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong, you yeah. know, but yeah it's funny like now like me answering the question i asked like i think coming to dad's house was really fun oh i loved it there was a moment when i was a kid i remember um and this is this isn't closing we got it in this episode um but i remember i was in my underwear okay and me and dad were just having like a little thing happen okay a little argument i don't know how old i was was, like four no i wasn't more like six seven maybe okay and i was like why did you guys get a divorce why did you guys separate you're supposed to be with mom um and I don't know why I was upset. I just like, I think I had this thought of like my parents are supposed to be together, but they're not. Yeah. Um, but now I'm fine. Like, it's just we're like, through it. We're through it, you know? Um, uh, yeah. So thank you for tuning in. <laughs> <Just sipping off. laughs> what, I'm still getting better awkward at ending. <laughs> Um, and I, I'm really blessed. It wasn't that like deep because, yeah. <laughs> but thank you for tuning in. If this is your very first time tuning in, thank you so much for listening. Uh, you can now listen to uh, Sip and All on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And you can now donate to Sip and All financially. Now, you might be wondering, where in the world are my finances going? Your finances are going to be going right into my wallet so I can go get dinner. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> They're going to be going right back into Sip and All. Better equipment for a better experience here at Sip and All. Uh, but for one last time, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for my brother. Charlie Windsor and guys we will see you here next week bye bye